we're achieving a very uh, new and unknown <laughs> territory here. Um, we have Debbie with us. Welcome, Debbie. Hi. And strange because I can't see anything except for the back of a phone. Ah. And oh wait, Kyla's gonna show me. Ooh, very cool. Very cool. Okay. So we we ended up um, deciding to call this Shop Hop. <laughs> That's going to be our working title from here on out. But the idea is that we're taking some of the emails that we get regarding what fiber do I need for this project, and we're going to shop in the space in which we ship. And as I shop, I'm going to talk about why and what um, in terms of techniques. We'll, we'll look at armature wires and I'll put everything into a basket for Debbie or our next participant down the road and no obligation to buy. It's really just an exercise in understanding what's needed for different projects and we can learn from each other. So for example, I have um, two submissions regarding elk. So that, that will be a fun one to do. Um, so Debbie is going to make a centaur. And my understanding is that she's been sitting on this armature for a while. Is that true? <laughs> because I have some concerns that I've just never taken the time to try and work out yet. So I just kind of keep letting it set, thinking all of it get to it. So I thought, what an opportunity. Um, to present those questions to you and hopefully get some insight and ideas. Good. Perfect. Yeah. A little birdie whispered <laughs> publicly. <laughs> a little birdie. Okay. Well, so a while back, a few, uh, Lee and a few of us created a Facebook page called like it's a big one or something. And so it was where we were sharing ideas for creating large, you know, large new territory pieces. So this is like kind of a way to do that, like to collaborate minds and share ideas. So I, um, I'm going to grab my cart and we're going to start in the wire area. You can hang tight. Um, I'm just going to get this so that I have something to put items into. Yeah, actually, I'm going to extend the legs on this, I think. Oh, that. Cool. Oliver, beep beep. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Okay, so Debbie already actually has her armature made, but I'm still going to talk about armature wire. Um, Debbie, can you do you have that with you? Can she hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Do you have your armature with you? Yes, I do. Can I see it? Yes. You're saying okay. It's on delay. Okay. Do we want All to right. flip for her? Don't to see? don't and mind me. I have to I have to get closer to the laptop just sure. to see because I don't my glasses on. Okay, hold it in profile. Why can't I hear Debbie? I'm not saying anything. The delay. Yeah. Okay. That delay is disorienting. Okay. So already Debbie's project has spurred us um, into an idea. Um, I was worried about when we make a buffalo or a moose, they kind of want to tip because there's so much head out in front of the front legs. And that was, we, that was one of we my. We can't. Yeah. So we create um, neck muscles, obviously <laughs> we can make them, but they're not doing their job. So things tend to tip. So keep your eyes peeled in the future for, we have like sort of a counterweight idea. Um, but I think the centaur, because the body is stacked over the front legs, I think you'll be okay. Still in an armature that size, I would tend towards um, 14 gauge um, to, um, you know, a, a twist of 14 gauge, but I would be sure to get some 12 gauge in there. 
we you can either make add that to your front legs or um or if you were to make a second armature which is always a good idea when you're doing a new project so that you have two working armatures they always get the second one better anyway and it doesn't take that long or that much expense or length of wire to make an armature so make two then if you need it it's there you have a record of it um so anyway 12 gauge i would i would definitely put in there and then we want a smaller gauge wire for fingers tail um, and lately i have been wrapping my aluminum wire more with a cloth covered wire than with um finial snap. So I would suggest a 26 gauge for fingers. I feel that 32 is just a little bit too nimbly wimbly. Like it, it, it doesn't hold its structure enough. And black should work just fine if you were, especially on legs and hooves, if you were worried about, um, if you were doing, you know, lighter skin, you might want a white wire under the fin fingers. And then a 22 gauge wire would be great on your armature and for your tail. So these are some options for your, um, for the rest of your armature. Okay. Obviously Debbie's been felting for a while. She has all the tools she needs. But uh, we'll just go over tools quickly. Definitely felting surface needles, any kind of needle tool that you like to have. I think this project, um, and, and, and I'm going to let you guys know that Debbie and I did a little run through <laughs> earlier, and we talked about reverse needling. So I'm going to talk about that. But so reverse needles I would have on hand. Um, cold wax medium I would have. I'm using swax in certain areas and i'm using cold wax more in certain areas swax definitely is stickier on things like fingers. cold wax doesn't have as much hold but cold wax is super convenient because it's right there uh, you don't have to heat it up it's not as sticky which is needed in some cases so those are a couple of specialty things um, in to your usual felting tools and you know like a face ace and a, um, and a zoli tool. We're not going to do any wet felting in this project. It's so all going to be needle felted. So let's um, we're going to talk about core wool. I'm going to grab one right here, but I am going to move over to the other side. I grab coffee bean and charcoal, but we're going to move right over here. <laughs> Just swing this around. So Debbie, we, we discussed um, a brown horse body, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. And I, so the horse coat line was designed for direct felting. Just put it on and stab it in. It has um, smooth, shorter staple, fine fibers with a little bit of tussle silk. So it has that little bit of shine. And if we go, I will, I will be going that way and talking about the colors. But Debbie asked for a real soft, almost velvety look. And one way to achieve that would be to reverse needle. And so when you're gonna reverse needle, it's important to consider what is underneath the top coat. In this case, if we go with a brown bay type horse, we could put um, copper core underneath. And then when you pull that out, you're gonna get kind of sunny highlights. So that's one way to go. You could put black or dark underneath and 
pull out dapples, that would be rather labor intensive. I think it's easier to put a lighter color under your top coat on top add dapples if you want them and then pull the lighter color out of the center of the dapples but either way if she were to felt you know really strong um act like a well-defined contours to her horse body then she would be able to reverse needle and you can even like comb it and it'll have that real velvety soft look which debbie how long is it going to be before we see that <laughs> I'm going to give myself two months for completion. Okay. I have We're looking on it. Okay. Um, so, just to clarify, coffee bean and charcoal? Yes. Okay. Any questions so far? That was one of the okay. questions. Okay. So I have coffee bean and charcoal. I'm going to pull a couple of others and, you know, Debbie can, Debbie can decide. I'm just sort of going to talk about why. Also, the amount. So this project is going to be in the three to four ounce range. And I know that because that's about what a moose is, maybe four plus. So you wanna have, you probably wanna have four ounces of core wool on hand. It might not take all that, but um, just to be sure. So I'm also gonna add black core to the cart because of hooves, eyes, details, um, and we always need black core. Um, carob would be an option. I wouldn't do carob and charcoal. Um, you can see the difference. Carob is a little warmer. Charcoal does have a, quite a bit of brown in it. It's interesting. It's balanced out with some cool gray and purple tones. So that's nice to see these side by side, but they are very similar value and overall they both read gray. So in they go. Well, you're, do you think your horse will have any white markings? No. No. Okay. I'm not going to add. I'm not going to add Serafina white. <laughs> this is the um. The copper. I am going to add that to the cart just in case. Debbie chooses that for her to build her horse body. And off-white chunky core because that might be the right way to go on the human portion of the body. Okay. So now we're in our house carded section. You can see our horse coats are here. And then just because we're here, I will show off the rest of it which isn't going to involve you backing back up but we have all the um landscape bats then we move into all of the pelts which was our original house carded line then we get into the pumpkin we've got the flowers we've got the santas and we've got the skin tones so lots lots and lots for sassy to do on dante on a regular basis oh also, while we're here, you'll notice um, <laughs> the white yarn is back in stock and you can look for the green and the pink later today, even, maybe. Okay. Debbie, yes. what did you like best in terms of color between bay, chestnut, and liver chestnut? I like both ends. But yeah, me too. Me too. So like we said, if you were to go with copper underneath, when you reverse that out, it's going to give you some highlights, which I think would be really cool. You can pick between these. I'll put them both in the basket. You could also blend them together. And then another option like traditionally a bay horse has black points like towards its hooves. So if you got seal brown, um, that could be a transitional color between your horse body and their lower leg. 
So I think these are gorgeous together. So I'm going to put those in the cart. I like that a lot. Yeah, me too. Can't wait to see it. <laughs> okay. Um, I think you'll end up directly belting your horse shape. I was just considering like a pre-felt for making the horse's skin, but I think to maintain all the musculature that you're going to create, um, you're going to just directly felt right on there. Do you, do you envision locks anywhere in this project? I don't think locks. I was thinking for the hair on the human. I hadn't really short or long, but I'm thinking shoulder length or just a hair longer. Something silky like fur, but I want to be able to put some kind of a curl towards the end of it. So I, mm -hmm. I think I need to create the curl on the fiber. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a look at fur. If you decided, you know, Surrey alpaca is always a wonderful go-to for hair, mane, and tail. And we refer people to Lee. Um, right. That's felt com because we don't carry Surrey regularly. I will show you the fur. I have had fun with fur as hair because you really can style it and you, you can mist it and crunch it if you want it to have some wave. Um, so that is a, that is a, a possibility for you. I think I would like to play with that and see what I can achieve with it. Yes. Any questions, Kyla? Not really. People are just drooling. Okay. Okay. So we are, um, we're waiting on a few fur items, but I will also grab some mulberry silk so you can think of, if you wanted to think about mixing things together. And you said dark, dark hair to match kind of the, the color that the tail would be. Yes. Okay, um, I'm gonna grab panther and mink. So these are um, these are the two darkest. Panther is almost black. It has a little bit of um, because it has some natural um, undyed alpaca in it. It has a little bit of variation, and then mink is a really deep, really deep brown. So between these two, you can blend or, um, you know, or pick, pick one of the other. I like them both. Yeah. Good. Um, we also have black mulberry silk. It's not, I've never, I don't think I've ever made hair with straight silk, it's super fine and soft. So relative to fur, like fur isn't as dense and heavy as Surrey alpaca, but um, silk is even more like sort of staticky. And so I know people have done it, but um, I think fur will, will be the better option for that. Someone's saying, why not use the fur for the mane and tail? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We created a tail on the pony. If you watch the po the sassy pony tutorial, you know, horse tails have sort of always been a problem, like how to do it. And so I actually used the plumage, the feather technique and put like, put fur at like folding over a sm shorter end. So it had its longest longest length coming out and then did the twist isn't that how we did the i think that's how we did the pony tail I, and then we crunched it yeah. with a little bit water. of water um i used fur also in the horse course and it doesn't have the same lay or like weight that a lock or a surrey alpaca would but it is very controllable so it's just a preference um, but Debbie can definitely use that on the horse tail. Yeah. Um, let's I've, see. I've seen people use silk 
you know what? For hair, but like braided. Like yeah. it's a little yeah. wild mm-hmm. unless it's tamed somehow. A braid is a great way to get more length out of the staple length because you can keep you can kind of braid almost like two really skinny pieces of roving. And so you can go longer and longer than you would be able to get like just the five inch staple length. I knew I forgot something, Debbie. Uh-huh. We're going to, should we, should we beep beep and go backwards or should we go back around? Cause I forgot the skin. Tone. <laughs> go back around. Okay. We're going to go back around. <laughs> I knew I was in this aisle for a reason. Okay, so Debbie, you wanted an olivey, like darker, right? I did, yeah. And I, I kind of like the one that's even a little bit darker, but I want to make sure that I have enough contrast from the the pony, the horse. Right. Right. So Arabica bronze. You know, these blended together might hit the right mark. Oh. Um, But I like that idea. I like that it might be more transitional than like, you know, (laughs) like pale skin, dark horse. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That would look, I think it would look more, um, more like... Con- congruous like beast like so do you um, like these that's a good point yeah i'll put these in is there anything else you want to look at or consider or do you think no i think one of those or i like the blending idea also right right Maybe I could use, honestly, maybe I could make it a little bit of the lighter color at the top part and just kind of gradually blend to blend more into the body. Yeah, that'd be good. That would be cool. So the skin tones are like the horse coat. They're made for direct felting um, to be real smooth and um, to polish off nicely when you're doing all those little details. Okay. Let's take a look at at the Merino section and just see if there's anything that we need as transition or blender. Uh, I guess I'm thinking mainly about the skin tone because the the horse coats are like spot, spot on. I love nut. That would be helpful. I do think so. Me too. That's beautiful. That just yeah. takes it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What else? Um, what did I forget? What questions there's, do you have? There's one question here. Can mm-hmm. you blend a bit of horse tail or mane with the fur to give it more stiffness? Horse Okay. Horse tail is very stiff. Mane could work. Um, it's, it, it's two totally different, uh, two very, so I, I, in terms of mixing them, it could be, could be, I've never done. It. I usually stay away from, some people have used real horse hair. The problem is and this is the same with like dogs and people are like, oh, well, their coat's really wiry. Well, you're making miniature. So this hair is going to shrink too. <laughs> so you're not, you don't necessarily want the same texture as the life-sized animal. Um, so in the horse tail hair, for example, or even the mane, it's hard to stick that into a smaller needle felting project because you know, it's going to be too long. It's going to stick off. It's just, you kind of have to reduce the, um, the fiber micron to match the reduction in the, in the size of the project. 
Now, Lucille did a horse and she used, I feel like she used horse mane and she, she figured it out. She had to like wet it and like strap it down. Oh, Jan <laughs> said she, this person who asked Jan, um, she has also musk ox outer okay. coat, which okay. is, um, that sounds finer. awesome. Not it's, familiar with it, but that sounds very cool. a little cool. finer than the horse. Cool. Yeah. So. Yeah. You might have a question. Sarah, the hooves black. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna graduate down black down the leg, would you do the hoof black? I love carob for the hooves because even a black horse, their hooves are dark, but they're not black. Okay. Um people put stuff on them to make them black and shiny, but um they're sort of that. I mean, they really are more in this family. Now, if you were to make your hoof black out of the black um, core wool, if you use swax on top of it, it will kind of opaque it and lighten it up. So that's one way to go. But I like the contrast of the black um, lower leg with a dark gray hoof. And I, I think I want to try the cold wax on the hoof. I've done swax on a hoof. I think I'd like to try the cold wax. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. I've been using it on um, the tree tips. I used it on, I just made a chick and I, I felted the beak really well. And then I put cold wax on the beak and I loved it. And you were able to kind of shape it um, a little bit and smooth it. I liked it. So let us know, um, let us know how to make out on that. Okay. Um, I'm thinking of any other, I mean, there's little things, there's little things for the human portion, you know, eye color and stuff like that. But, um, you know, that's just such a minute amount of fiber. Um, is there anything else that you can think of? The, the only other thing I can think of is that I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to try to make a pretty square jaw. Mm -hmm. So, help when I'm ready to do that. Okay. Okay. I've only worked female faces, so. Um, we do a square jaw and a goat. <laughs> <laughs> but, and... A couple of times I've used the 22 gauge to actually create like the shape of the jawbone. Like we did that for the gorilla, I think, and we did it for the horse. Um, so that's another way to go. You could, you could actually, even if, so you sort of bend your wire into a U, which also helps make the strong chin. And then when it comes back, you bend that strong right angle and then wrap that and secure it. And that, you know, then you just kind of put that right onto the face. Um, I like that. Felt the it's going to be a little bigger than things I've worked on before. So I like that a lot. Yeah. How big, how tall is the armature at the withers and then how tall is it from the ground to the top of the human part you told me but let's the, remind everybody else. The, seven inches from foot to the top of the head it's 18 inches whoa okay top of the chest it's 11 inches okay it's big it's big it's bigger than i thought when you Wait. held it up 18 is right, but I'm pretty sure it's 18. You're going to have opportunity for a lot of detail. It's so 14. that'll be fun. To the top of the head, it's 14. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're going to have, you're going to have a lot of fun with that. We didn't talk about armpit hair. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately, he just, he just merges a horse chest. <laughs> um, oh, any other? 
So what if after a little bit of chest hair, would you reverse needle that? Would I put a little darker under the under the skin tone? You know what might look cool is I, more is like a silvery like a silvery chest hair instead of dark. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to explore the chest. <laughs> Has anyone needle felted chest hair? I know we've had a few. I know I haven't done it, but that is, uh, that's another, um, Debbie, are you making a list of all the things you need to fill us in on? Yes. <laughs> I'll put I a, um, I'll put a little bit of silver, silver sable in your order and you can, you can experiment with, um, panther and silver okay. sable i think you could reverse needle i'm just not sure that you want that dark under your like right. sure felt your hum the human part in dark <clears throat> um yeah okay. That's that's some uncharted territory as far as I know, for me I could, anyway. I could also possibly do it almost like sparse fur, the sparse fur technique, and then trim it real close. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, yeah, maybe like add some different, you know, fur textures in there, trim it, and then, it, you know, it's so forgiving. If you don't like it, you just like just wax him. Yeah. <laughs> just pluck, it, pluck it back out. Singe it off. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Everybody's chat just about the power wax. I okay. Just, I just linked that. It's out of stock, but there's more on the oh. order now. Um, dip it in meat. <laughs> right now, Nair, Nair, yeah. yeah. So, I just feel like I'm. I'm just trying to think if I'm, um, missing any. We got the little hands. We talked about twenty six gauge fingers. Um, did hooves, tail. Yeah, I think I think we've got a really nice um assortment of the fibers that you need. Oh. Very simple project. Very simple project. <laughs> You're only combining the two most difficult advanced courses that we have, the horse <laughs> and the figure. <laughs> Leave it to me, I guess. Yeah. Oh, I know your face will be um, super well structured. That's Debbie's thing. Mm -hmm. Real. Come with, come with those Debbie's the one that we always say loves. She loves the fingers. She does love the fingers. Now she's got uh, six appendages instead of two or four. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, now I'm started on it. What'd she say? Say it again. Now I'm excited to get started on it instead of oh. just looking at it and going. Good. We've provided a little bit of entertainment, a little bit of inspiration, <laughs> and now you have a deadline. So, <laughs> yeah, you I think a deadline. <laughs> Did you just say Julie? Yeah, Julie Adams yeah. told me yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, she gave me the deadline. Yes. <sighs> All right. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in. And if you want to have your project featured in our shop hop, you can email, you're actually reaching me at seraphinafiberart at gmail.com. I do have a little list going. So, you know, I can't, I don't know yet how frequently we're going to do these. We, I mean, we should be able to do them. I can shoot for once a week. It's not, yeah. you know, it's, it's like kind of a fun minute. process just to walk through in my own mind. And um, it's not too hard to think from the armature out um, about what you need. And, you know, what we're lacking in aesthetics down here is made up for in um, 
organization. Organization and what's the other word I'm looking for? It's plentiful, but I know there's a different <laughs> word that I wanted. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun it's a fun thing to conceptualize the project and then walk around and figure out what we need. So, yes, if you submit and I, I'll email you back, let you know I got it, and then, but if you're chomping at the bit to start your project and I haven't made your <laughs> made your little live stream yet, um, that's a possibility that might happen. So, but it's it's fun. What do you want to go through one more time and just name? Sure. A couple of people are asking either a core or a skin tone. Yep. So if you just name each one. Yep. We picked out um, 12 and 14 gauge wire. Debbie's already has her armature, but if she were to make a second one and take records, that would be a brilliant idea. And I suggested getting some 12 gauge in there because um, it is going to be hefty. And then we picked out some cloth covered wire I have 26 gauge in black and white for things like fingers and um, maybe even wrapping your um, ar your aluminum part of your armature. And a 22 gauge could be brown, black, or white, but this is great for the tail and also could add extra structure to your armature. For core wool for the horse, we have several options. Um, and Debbie can decide, but I have carob and charcoal, which are, I wouldn't necessarily get both of these, but they're similar sort of mid to dark value grays. And then coffee bean, if she wanted to keep her color closest to her top coat colors, coffee bean would be that, um, that choice. But then we picked out copper, which I love. We're using this right now largely as our replacement for cinnamon. Um, it has such a nice, warm, um, mid-value color. And if Debbie wanted to reverse needle, when she pulls that out of her horse coat colors, there will be some highlights. So this could be a fun thing to reverse needle. If she didn't want those highlights, I would go with the coffee bean. On her horse top coat, we have bay and liver chestnut. You can see hopefully that they're very similar in value, and but bay is a cooler red with a little more purple in it, and liver chestnut is a browner, a more brown red. And then we also pulled seal brown because this will be a nice transition to almost black lower legs. Hey, Debbie, when you wrap your armature, I would go ahead and wrap at least the lower legs, if not the whole leg in black. Okay. Uh, no matter what you decide to, to use on the rest of your horse. And then for the human half, <laughs> I have off white, chunky core, which I would use to start to build, but then you might even want to switch to your copper as you get into the thinner part of the arms and the face, since you're using this sort of mid, um, mid value skin tone combo. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. So, you know, you can build the bulk um, with the off-white and then it just depends. I think this would cover off-white chunky just fine. Uh, but especially in your facial features, you might want to switch to the, to the copper. And then we have some fur for hair, tail, etc. Chest hair, potentially. <laughs> Body hair in general. No Milo today. He got left home with my kid. <laughs> That's I, it. I'm actually and, of of what your basket for my project. Um, which 
and just send a note with the product that's in your basket and um, you guys create the order or do you need me to go into the website and individually? I think I'll send you a list and then it would be easiest for you to order from your account and Perfect. you can pick from the list. Okay. Perfect. That way I'm sure to get the right names of the things. Yep. Okay, cool. Good. I think that should work out. Cool. People want to see more, so we'll okay. plan another one soon. All right. Yeah. So you maybe might. we'll see you guys. Maybe we'll see you guys again next Friday. I don't know, but I will for sure keep you posted. The actual link worked. The chime in worked. We don't know how to end it, but we'll figure that okay. out in a second. <laughs> be here awkwardly while they try to figure out how to end the video. Thank you so much, Thank Debbie. You. Thank you, Debbie. We're gonna go with. We're gonna go. See what happens with the X. Stream. End stream.